Um, I'd just like to ask you why you're creating this video and what is the purpose of this PD? Thanks for coming, Torton. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess we have two goals and they're laid out here. We want to create this video. The, f the first reason is because we want to get this opportunity of professional development out there that we start to do virtual. We want to do that because we think it could be something that we try in the future. So, and then the second goal is we want to dive into our strategic plan. We have this beautiful district strategic plan, which we think is awesome because it's got a groundswell. It's created from the ground up by teachers, by administrators together, and it's germane to us. So. Those are kind of our main goals, and uh, I think the video is one small portion of what we do to get this whole thing started. And then you'll also have an opportunity to do some blog feedback, and then at the end of the morning session, feedback with your peers. So we're trying something new, and we're using something that's connected to everybody in our district, K-12. Now, what is the format for this professional professional development? Okay, so we're going to try something new this time. And so on the 4th, on March 4th, is Elementary Professional Development, K-6. On March 5th, the Secondary Professional Development for 7th through 12th grade. And so what we're going to try and what we're going to ask you to do is start with this video. And these are the first directions that we want to give you. And the, and the, vi the directions are, we're going to release this to you with a link. Uh, at least a, about a week ahead of time, either Monday or Tuesday before. And then we want you to watch the video. We want you to dive in to the, you're gonna have a link on a blog site to our strategic plan. We want you to look at the strategic plan. And then we want you to think about those two things together. And there's three questions. They're simple questions, but they're valuable posted on the blog site. We want you to respond to those three questions. And then we'd also like you to post three comments on other people's threads. Consider this, we're going to have about 160 staff members posting comments on the blog site. And so if you could post a detailed response to them, something more than, I like your post, we'd really appreciate it. So that is from 8 to 10. You do not have to come in from 8 to work from 8 to 10, the morning of your PD. You can do this PD the day you get the video. You can do it at night. You can do it on the weekend. You can do it during some time during your school day, before or after your school day. It's The idea is to have the professional development be virtual. At 10 o'clock on the morning for both session days, elementary or secondary, we want you to come in and you're gonna meet with your group, a small group, whether that's your grade level team in your building or your department if you're a secondary person. And we just want you to pull up the blog site and reflect on some of the things that are posted on there that is the value in this. It's the thinking about it and talking about it and, and maybe creating some strategies on how could we simply implement some of these things. We don't want you to create the world and try and bite off everything in there, but what would apply to your department? What could you see yourselves slowly immersing yourselves in? And then the ultimate goal is to, f to find this, this common thread that links us K-12 as a staff. Our grade level subject matter is different, but these concepts are germane to all of us so that's our real goal for the day. Now what is this Four C's thing and the atmosphere all about? <laughs> the Four C's is a byproduct once again of teachers getting together and principals and administrators and thinking about things and creating kind of a direction for us. That was the impetus of the Four C's. With uh, Joe Sin and could you describe what your goal is? Uh, our goal number one is to ensure that all students are academically prepared, that they graduate and are prepared to compete in a 21st century uh, global workplace, global economy, whether that includes the military, four-year college, two-year col college, uh, some sort of certificate training. Um, we want to make sure that all of our graduates are prepared for that after high school post-secondary experience. Now, uh, who's on your team? In addition to myself, we have the elementary school principal, Shelley Peets, Sandra Smiths, uh, Adrian Bredring, the school psychologist, is on our team. Um, from the intermediate and middle school, we have Stacy Peterson. Um, also, um, Heather Brewer is on our team. Um, from the high school, in addition to myself, uh, this year we've been helped out by Sandy Baker. Jerry Rabideau is on our team, and we've gotten some insight from Jen Knittle as well. Um, and so it's a, a good group of people, good team to work with. I, thanks for joining us, Patty. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions so everybody could kind of know what's going on. Can you describe to us what your goal is? Sure. Um, I guess to state the goal, uh, the goal says that all graduates will be equipped to compete and contribute to 
a global community. Students need to be able to access and um, assess and analyze information that um, encourages them to be curious, to be imaginative, so they can create new projects, new ways of doing things. Um, they need to be able to lead by influence, not authority. And so um, as we're looking at this global piece, you know, we used to look at kids as left-brained and right-brained, left-brain being critical thinkers, problem solvers, right-brain being um, curious, creative. Now we need to graduate kids who have the full brain, who are ready to do all skills that will make them um, successful in our economy. Thanks. And so I know at our last meeting we had our, our main focus last year was creating like this vision and this year it was doing, doing the strategies. Can you tell us some of the main things that you, th that you would identify that your team's working on this year for strategies? Yes. Um, you know, I guess the, the biggest thing that we had to do was if we were going into this next level of, of curriculum and, and as, a, as a district looking at where are we going globally, we had to kind of um, look at our mission statement and um, make sure that that um, sent us into the future, that it wasn't a statement of where we are, but where are we going. So we could look to that, kids could look to that, the community could look to that and think, this is where Spring Lake is going. It's, it's not ending, but it's a, a journey. And so um, Renee, being the um, director of Bluebird Cancer Retreats. Was that did, Renee Denslow? Denslow, yes. Yeah. And I don't know that I mentioned her. Did That's I mention okay. her on the committee? Well, she is on our committee. <laughs> yeah. Um, she, being the director of, like I said, the Bluebird Cancer Retreat, did a great job of leading us through activities where we just brainstorm. You know, what does a student in Spring Lake look like? What, and the thing that we kept coming back to was community and the importance of community and the importance of these global issues. And so that allowed us to recreate our mission statement, um, look at a vision statement, and come up with core values that we thought were important. So this team actually got some feedback and then talked to people and then yes. formulated the mission, vision, yes. and core values. And that's how we started really, to right. launch this whole process. So from there, um, we then did a lot of reading. Shelley recommended this book, which we um, read, The Global Achievement Gap by Tony Wagner. and um, That was very interesting. Uh, Dennis and Bev Hundley at the time had great articles just to educate ourselves on what does global education look like so we could formulate a plan that was current and based on current research. As, as you look back, like we kind of, oh, we all know, we started this a year and a half ago, yeah. maybe almost two years ago, and you, it's come a long way, and you guys are doing excellent work, and you worked hard at it. What, what do you, I mean, if you look at some of the things that are under you, the heading of global, what, do you, what are you most proud of that the group's accomplished? Or what are you most excited about? Or oh, I think, you know, when I look at our, our strategies, you know, and, and what needed to happen in order for this global piece to become entrenched in Spring Lake Schools, technology was one while well, we're going through a bond issue for that. Um, having a curriculum at the high school that is, um, teaches tech processes and learning, not information, um, changing the way that we teach. We, we found out that schools that were successful in global learning were using the IB program. And um, as you know, last night at the board meeting, um, Mike presented an awesome plan that um, in, in getting the high school on board with that, and, and it sounds like they've embraced that, that program and are working towards full implementation. And, and maybe as that comes, we can work it down to the elementary as well. But IB was huge in um, not having to recreate something, that curriculum, um, is giving the tools of global learning to the students. So that was one uh, another piece. Um, I think the foreign language piece, if, if kids are going to compete globally and, and communicate globally, they have to be at least bilingual, if not tri trilingual. And um, the committee that in the district that looked at that, it's, it's because it was mentioned in the strategic plan, a committee started, looked at that, and, and said, how are we going to get, you know, if, if one of our strategies says eventually kindergarten through 12th graders are going to be getting foreign language every day as part of an education, what's that look like? And um, so that committee's come up with a great plan that's going to start at the top and because that's where it's so successful and that's where the experts are and it's going to just move down year by year so eventually we'll be a K-12 foreign learning school. Excellent. Thanks. Is there anything else you'd like to add that, that seems important as far as the, the strategy or goal you guys are working on? 
No, I think um, this is such an exciting time to be part of the district with all the new initiatives. I think the strategic plan has launched many new initiatives. Um, it gives us a reason to evaluate, should we do something, should we not, based on the plan. It's exciting. I w the board meeting last night was unbelievable with the um, IV program that was presented and then you know that elementary planning committee um, thinking outside the box and using what globally kids are going to need those skills um, in redefining what elementary um, programming looks like. It's exciting. Yeah. I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curve, but that's not, not too bad. You, you, you were one of the initial people on the district improvement team mm -hmm. when we kind of we all got together at mm -hmm. first. And can you just can you give us just a brief? like description of where we came or who, who how that sure that first meeting was you know Bev Dennis started the meeting Bev called the meeting and it was a combination of school improvement and curriculum council I yeah think. CAC mm -hmm. the school improvement and CAC and um, Dennis said if money was not an issue I remember that if money was not an issue where would we take the district and then we just started brainstorming and, and listing things so where where should school spring lake schools be how does that look where where um, can we uh, take kids and, and from there you know we started grouping things and we came up with our goals and then everyone thought wow this goal looks interesting to me and um, it was amazing how from that brainstorming session from there to a strategic plan that is has buy-in from the staff it was a grassroots you know um, just like the elementary, you know, the part of the global education that um, and that concept that I love is that bus businesses are no longer top down, but they're flat because groups are working and in each group you have all kinds of people. And last night that was so evident in our district that you have teachers and parents presenting to Dennis, presenting to the board what's best in the district. And so um, all of those skills that we're learning, we're practicing you know, not only are we going to teach our kids those skills, but we're practicing every day as teachers. Yeah, yeah great. Thanks a lot. It's good information. Good. appreciate it. Hi, I'm Scott Ely. I'm sitting here with Ben Lewikowski. We're talking about the district strategic plan, and Ben is the goal team leader for technology. Ben, can you describe to us what your goal is? Sure. Our, my team is in charge of goal number three, and the goal is that all graduates will be technology literate um, when they leave Spring Lake schools. I showed in a little bit of the segment that we had the Gantt chart, some of the tasks that you guys are working on, but what we did not show is who is on your team. Can you briefly describe who's on your technology goal team? Sure. We have a pretty diverse group. We've got teachers from the high school, uh, both elementary schools, middle school, intermediate school, um, a couple administrators, and Brent Gustafson, who's in charge of uh, most of our technology and has pretty much touched every device in the, uh, in the district. So it sounds like you have a really diverse team. What what are some of the strategies that you guys are working on within that goal right now? What are the prime things that would stand out to you? Well, the goal, we're working on several different things. Um, one of them is to expand and to update the district curriculum. Um, one of them is to improve the technology skills of the staff and the students. Um, one thing that the staff isn't overly involved with, but Brent and I will be taking a look at is our district infrastructure and um, we want to improve student access to technology and especially in the, within the classrooms. When you talk about infrastructure, I don't think some people understand sometimes how much, like for example, bandwidth it might take for us to run stuff on Wi-Fi. Can you just touch on that briefly and talk about what some of that, what that might look like or sure, something? Sure, sure, sure. Well, most recently we, we, we just um, installed the, the wireless without within the buildings. Um, right now our wireless is not considered to be a dense network, um, which is fine for right now, uh, but over time we're going to need to expand that even further so that if we do have you know, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 uh, devices running at one time, that everybody's working um, productively and connect to the internet when they need to. So it's looking at all of our servers, our switches, all of the behind the scenes things that keep things up and running. So those are the things that people don't see. With uh, Jessica O'Donnell, and I was just wondering, how did you go through the process of reaching the four C's as a target for Spring Lake? Well, thank you for interviewing me. Um, our process started back this summer, July 2012, and we were all gathered at the home of our curriculum director, Scott Ely. Um, we were a group that was composed of our superintendent as well as administrators and teachers from all different levels, uh, from all different buildings. 
Our time began together in small groups discussing the themes around the Common Core Standards. Uh, we came together with a lot of common themes. A word cloud was then developed as kind of our inspiration from there. They included the 21st century learning skills, innovation, common vocabulary, and the list kind of goes on from there, you can see. Um, we also then broke up into groups after that, looking at many of the common themes that are in our Spring Lake District Strategic Plan. Um, some of those included a need for global connections, as well as the development of what we were calling technology swagger, and I'll get back to that in a second. Um, we then had a second meeting, and this meeting was held at Izzy Design in Grand Haven, where we took a look at both of the different sets of themes that we came up with from the Common Core and the District Strategic Plan. And then from there, we brainstormed how they fit together to kind of create a unifying target for Spring Lake. Also, when we got together, there was a very creative saying that came from that day. Spring Lake Swagger, it's not who we are, it's what we do. And that kind of formed into our five overlapping themes of the four C's in 1A. Atmosphere, communication, collaboration, creativity and innovation, and critical thinking. Several sketches were designed um, for possibility uh, of a representation. And this is what we came up with for our Spring Lake Swagger target. All right. Okay, so I'm sitting here with Amy Sheridan. What, what we really wanted to talk about was bring light to some of the global projects that you had going on with your kindergarten kids. And, you know, um, we're talking about our strategic plan, and in there is three goals. One of the goals is global education. And so we, I, I've been able to watch you make some connections with different partners in different parts of the world with your kindergarten class. Can you tell us about what that looks like a little bit? Well, we started our school year with um, quad blogging with a group from um, England and two groups from New Zealand. So there were four of us and that's why they call it quad blog. And so each week we would host the blog and the other schools, elementary children would get on and check out our blog and leave comments. And there was such power in, in hearing from other kids um, around the world that I really like what you did, I like what you created, just you know being able to encourage the kids that um, what they were doing was unique and special and um, it was it was exciting. Okay so that's how you started and then yeah. did you do a group with, with did you do some other groups as well? So and then we did some video sharing between another a different class in New Zealand and I would share and compare things so I would videotape what lunch looked like that day and we talk about what we ate and then she would videotape her lunch and we would kind of con compare and contrast what each other were wearing, what the kids were wearing, what they were eating, how they made their lunch choices, just to see that there's a lot of things that are the same and a lot of things that are different. Okay. And so you told me that you're now connecting with a group in Hawaii. So yeah, that's our latest project okay. because what happened is we were, well we were Skyping with the group in Brazil and they're on summer break. So okay. now we try and just keep one kettle on the fire at a time, not okay. to overwhelm the kids and because it, I feel like it's a positive piece of communication. Sometimes it's written through blogging, sometimes it's spoken through you know, the situation with the videos. That was more okay. of a spoken um, communication. And then this is gonna be collaborating on a children's book. With the students in Hawaii? With the kindergarten class in Hawaii. Okay. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about so it. So you, you've got all these things. How did you make these connections? How did you find other teachers or other groups to, to do this with? I mean, well, was it difficult? Was it? When we started talking last summer about how we really wanted to make an emphasis in Spring Lake on global learning, I just really felt strongly that um, kindergartners are so curious about other people that it excites them. You know, to, to learn about people around the world, to learn about different cultures and, and animals that aren't from here. And it just seems like a natural fit to start exploring what other people are doing that looks the same as us and looks different. And so um, that's when I started digging into Twitter. That was one of my main sources of finding different groups. Um, also Skype for Education was really powerful um, for finding groups or creating your own groups. And um, Edmodo was my third resource for being able to find people to, to hook up with that are also doing this. And I found a lot of great mentors out there through 
connecting globally with other educators. That's been really powerful for me to learn from people who are also engaging other, you know, their classes digitally. It's been powerful. So, if it, so you're obviously, you're, you've got an iPod initiative classroom pilot. You've got an interest in technology. If, if, what would you say to someone who's like an average, average technology person? Myself would be included. What, what would you say to them would be? What would you recommend as a way to get started? Um, um, for some, for someone, just as a simple starting point to connect. I think this is a great way, without being an iPad classroom, to get started with engaging kids globally and with a piece of technology. Because I didn't use my iPads, you know, to do this. Right. This has been just an effort with using my my computer or my iPad, my personal iPad, in order to Skype and connect. So I think it's a great way to be able to get started and just to start helping kids become aware globally. I think the world is going to look so different in 20 years that they're going to need skills that carry them out um, into the world, not just into their community. And we've learned so many new fun words, you know, by Skyping with people from other right. countries, you know. We, um, we're like, what's a sledge and what's a what's a chap? You know, all these fun words that we learned when we were Skyping with our friends in Brazil. The students were speaking in Portuguese and we would try and repeat them and sound funny, but you know, just learning that there's other languages, there's different cultures, there's other foods that we haven't tried and okay. so. Is there any advice you'd give to anybody who's gonna try and get started? Because your peers are gonna look at this and we're trying to get people to think yes I think that it just it takes time to be able to sit down on Twitter and find what you're looking for and really think about what experiences you want to expose your kids to globally and then from there look at the opportunities that you see in some of these groups for Twitter and I'd be glad to share some of the links that I found okay. um, so they can get started on that you know one of our one of our focus points is always we know you guys are extremely busy at all levels we know you've got curriculum you have to deliver and it seems to get more and more crowded every year were you able to find connecting points that made sense i mean were you able to do it without um, you know trying to do a bunch of different things where you felt frenzied well, i feel like it ties so well into written and speaking you know, the written communication the, the speaking all those language arts goals that we're developing now they're authentic you know, it's not just doing it for education's sake. Now we're using it to, for a purpose, to communicate globally, to, you know, expand our horizons. And it also, you know, starts linking some of those social studies goals okay. as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, Mrs. Van and Bosch is fine fourth grade students, and we're just going to have a little discussion about, you guys had a chance to look at our, our big front page of our strategic plan, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. The mission statement, vision, the core values. So mm -hmm. can you just share with me what, what might have stood out to you? What do you remember after seeing those things? I think the vision statement really stood out for me because it's saying that we want the Spring Lake Public Schools to definitely work harder and build a world that doesn't exist and kind of make the humanity stronger and better in that way. Good, excellent, thank you. What, what, what are some other things that stood out to you? I think some of like the important words like perseverance even though, just keep trying, even if there's obstacles. Okay. Yeah, that really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that stood out with me um, is the vision statement, like Natalie, it, it was very strong in words and saying, we want this to happen, and um, we want, like, in this school to be better, the best that it can be. Good. Those are great examples. So if I had to say to you, what can we do in school? When you're learning from me, what, what can we do in school to help that be better? What would you say are, how could we address those things well, that you mentioned? We should probably kind of teach everything, even if you don't think you're ever going to use it in your life, you probably will. Are you talking about like what you mentioned, like the perseverance? Yeah. Okay, so in, in classrooms? Yeah, even if you don't think you're not going to use it, you still probably will. Okay. Is that something you'd like to learn about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think sometimes Sorry. I think sometimes that you're going to need to learn on some life skills that you might use and so kind of to teach them like every day to kind of put it into what you're saying. What would a life skill example be? That, that like you guys do that here now? Perseverance is one of your life skills. And kindness and caring. Kindness and caring. Kind of to put it Tolerance. into Excellent. what you're talking about. That's awesome. That's a great example. Any other examples you can think well, of? Well, I really think that 
some of the important things that would be, it's really very important is our specials, like music and art, because those things go into a lot of different jobs and other things. So it's, it's very, think, well, very important to learn those. That might teach you a skill in a different area besides yeah. math. Or? Math and... Okay, that's a great point. You know, you guys have made some excellent points. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? Any thoughts you had on that that you'd like to share? No. Thank you very much. You did a great job. All right. Spring Lake has created a new mission statement. What does this mean to you? I think the mission statement is a great uh, way for teachers and students to come together and to aspire to achieve uh, goals. The teachers teaching kids to go out in the real world and be successful and the kids uh, working hard so they can be successful when they get out into the real world. Okay, so what do you think about this vision statement? Can we achieve this? Yeah, I really enjoy the part where it says, um... <laughs> I'm sorry. Think of this vision statement. Can we achieve this? Yeah, I really enjoy the part where it talks about building a world that doesn't exist. I like to thank Spring Lake. It's a great school. And uh, we're teaching, well, teachers are teaching us students to be innovative and to make something that doesn't exist. I see the mission statement includes core values. What do you make of those? Integrity, community, compassion, perseverance, and excellence are all the basis for Spring Lake students. And it's what we strive for in Spring Lake, and it makes it such a great place to live, all those core values. Um, what do you think the teachers can do to make this strategic plan happen? Um, as technology increases, I think we should also learn how to apply those to our daily um, school activities. and. As teaching styles like change throughout the day and everything, like I think we should accommodate for those. Yeah, they're not traditional. No. They're more hands-on and about experiences. All right, thank you.